This story is short, and not as horror-filled as the rest, but still a yike story, so I figured I'd share. This was quite a few years ago. One of the players who was playing a cleric was already a bit of an issue. He was very, very slow in combat. One of the other players, who is honestly more worthy of his own horror story, which I might share later, timed one of his turns, and it took eight minutes, maybe? Could be more? But yeah, it was somewhere in that range. However, we dealt with it, he was learning, whatever. Then, a certain combat came. My bard got a little bit hurt. So, in comes Cleric. I'm going to cast Cure Wounds by grabbing Bard's boo. Guys. 40 seconds. Into the video. Come on. Yeah. There was a bit of silence after that, and the DM said he instead just laid a hand on my arm, and we continued. After the game, the DM told me he was going to talk to Cleric Player because this behavior was unacceptable. Instead of apologizing, the Cleric Player just left. There was no dramatic final monologue or anything. He just said he was leaving. I don't remember his exact words, and then he just left. So, TLDR? Player tries to grab my character's boobs and leaves instead of apologizing. This story is very succinct to the point with the horror. I like it. Very nice. I mean, I am kind of curious what the other player did to deserve a full horror story. Like, was it worse than this? Because, I mean, at that point, I don't even know if I want to know. Besides, it was between reading this story or reading the story that was posted by the actual human pet guy. And given that the actual human pet guy, despite having worked for months to impregnate this website with the seed of my wisdom, the womb of Tumblr has swollen only with out of context mockeries of my person. Yeah, I'd rather read this. I'm not good at coming up with a title for this. Also, this isn't like too bad of a story, but I love the sub and felt like I'd try posting my experience. By the way, if people don't like the way I space out my typing, I am sorry. I suck at reading, and this is just how I've learned to type things out in order to read them easier. I run a homebrew campaign in my own massive homebrew world. The players all get along and enjoy how much work I put into making maps and 3D tokens for... Basically everything. Well, one of our players, Adam, one day decides his current character, a Hexblade Kalishtar named Atlas, is going to rob a bank in the capital city. The party has to beg him for literally two days of Discord messages to not do this, as the party had recently met the queen and would be instantly recognizable and lose any good reputation that they had. He agrees, reluctantly, but when they get to the upscale tavern that they were staying at, he notices a table of nobles, and over here is one discussing his business. Realizing this man is rich, he tells me that he is going to rob this nobleman and open a casino and bank in the town the party calls home. Me, being the person who listens to almost all of these stories on YouTube through Crispy, aw, thanks, Crick Crab, Drake, etc., I was like, Hey, I'm not gonna railroad you into doing something you wanna try, but it will be hard. So, we have a private tech session where he goes and climbs on top of the roof of the shop. The shop was located about a football field away from the noble's mansion. He wants to use this to scout the mansion and glean some information from it. During his second night of scouting, he is spotted by both some city guards and some thieves guild members protecting this noble that I never mentioned to the party. Obviously, the guards are the ones who yell out to him and detain him. They ask him, what the hell was he doing up there? And that he will be charged for trespassing. I assumed he knew that you cannot just climb onto buildings you don't own without trespassing. I mean, people get arrested on the news fairly commonly for doing exactly that on all sorts of skyscrapers. So as he is arguing with me, saying that he shouldn't be arrested because he did nothing wrong, he tried to cast a spell and escape. Now, I had planned for this and put anti-magic cuffs on him because think of how many times someone being arrested might just try to misty step away or whatever. This adds on another charge and earns him a week in prison. Eventually, he does get out, and the party scolds him for being a dumbass and risking their group's reputation with the queen. They go on a quest afterwards in the city sewers, and this guy, who is not tanky or a frontline at all, decides, screw the barbarian, I'm going to lead this. So yeah, a giant alligator slash croc takes him down to four hit points. He had 38 max. 
after finishing it off and continuing on, still trying to lead the charge at four hit points, nobody healed him, and he never drank a potion, but anyway, they got to a chest, a giant mimic. Now, the player knew IRL about them and asked to make a perception roll, which I allowed. It was pretty low, and I said, it looks like a pretty standard chest. He goes to open it and instantly loses his four hit points and drops unconscious. And then as that mimic had a multi-attack, he lost two death saves right then and there. Well, for some reason, nobody healed him. And so when it came to his turn, he tried to roll in real life with his lucky dice. And we said we would need to watch through his Discord's call camera. And he said, okay, never mind, and rolled on D&D Beyond. He got four. Well, as you watch as Atlas tries to lead the charge, he gets eaten by a Mimic, who swallows him upon his death and burps. The rest of the party decimates the Mimic because they were well prepared for the CR3 that the giant Mimic was. He starts a new character. This one lasts no time at all, so I'll spare you those details, but it was a Blood Hunter. Well, after he gets integrated into the party, his lawful good detective decides he is going to become a gunslinger. Okay, I can sell a pistol or maybe Matt Mercer's guns. No biggie. Well, he decides that I have to make him a gun that does not follow the rules as written. This vial of poison can be used to coat something three times, but that he should have a gun that he can use to get teens amounts of charges as the poison is literally integrated into the gun, coating each bullet on exit. I tried negotiating and saying, well, how about it can do that, but only three times per vial. Three bullets are poison, like the rule stated. No. Okay, well then, he sets his sights on building a nuke to, I suppose, nuke the capital city where this entire story took place, and yet he wasn't an artificer or even had the tinkerer's tools, so I'm just sitting here like, no, sorry, that makes no sense, and I'm not going to let you nuke my city where my player character from another game lives as an NPC. Eventually, I ask him in DMs, hey, are, are you like trolling or, or what? I provide my reasons for asking examples of things that happened and he just, he just left the campaign instantly after. No discussion, no explanation. Frankly, I was fine with it because he made me start hating playing, but at the same time, he said he really enjoyed my games. So I'm not sure why he couldn't have just toned it down and acted a little, you know, better. Pretty sure that if he hadn't left then this story would have had many more events to it. Hence why I see it as good news when the garbage just takes itself out. In this case, the garbage being a player with some absolutely confusing motives. I've said in a couple of videos that some people just want to watch the world burn, and this is certainly one of those people. In this case, the world being a D&D &D game. I mean, the OP at the end, not letting him nuke the city is good, though I do think the reasoning shouldn't just be, oh, I have a favorite NPC that lives here. It should be, hey, this is where all the quests are taking place, this is where all the player characters are, and nuking a city is pretty evil for a character that's supposed to be lawful good? This is kind of like the chaotic and even more childish version of the main character syndrome. In a lot of ways, it's much, much worse. It's intrusive upon the game. When a player is acting like this, when a player is being this ultra chaotic, stupid character that's trying to always hog the spotlight in such a childish way, it can really get in the way of just playing D&D. The rest of the party just feel like they're always having to curtail the behavior of one player, and that can make the game extremely unfun to play. Hence why, why it was absolutely for the best that this player did not stick around for any longer in this game. I have not played many games, but despite that, I still have a couple of stories. So one time back in the late 2000s, a friend of mine asked if they could use my apartment for a meeting of our college's D&D &D group. I agree because I wanted to get into tabletop games and this seemed like a great way to meet a bunch of people who were really into it. They asked me because my apartment was not only super close to the college, but it was also located above a restaurant and had a huge living room, so it was perfect. Bit of an important side note, the college had recently moved dorm buildings around and when they realized they messed up the numbers, they rented out various properties in businesses around the city. They were still apartments, but the college paid for the whole building or particular floors and those were considered college property and thus ran via RAs. Obviously, this did not apply to every building across the college and it didn't apply to my apartment that I rented before all this happened. Everybody gets there. They all know one another and everyone settles down for a fun one shot. So this guy who is sitting next to me, we will know as Tantrum, leans over and hands me this post-it note that basically says I need to help him kill off the character of this girl who is seated as far away from Tantrum as possible while still being in the circle. I tell him no, I, 
I don't want to do that. I don't know what's going on, but I don't want to be a part of it. Full stop. Tantrum starts living up to his name and tries to get all aggressive with me about it. Grumbly, whine voice about how I will do this or else. Now people are starting to look at us. I tell him no, again, and that he needs to knock it off. He says he can do whatever he wants because this is his friend's house. I tell him I've never met him before. This is my apartment, and if he doesn't knock it off, he is going to get kicked out. He stands up, gets in my face, and calls me a liar. My friend, who was the DM, stands up and asks what the hell is going on with him. I tell him what happened, and Tantrum tries to talk over me and demands I be kicked out of my own apartment. DM is like, dude, this is their apartment, and I told you that before we got here. I also told you to knock it off with trying to kill that one girl's character. He says he can do what he wants, and the DM has to make my character help him. DM is like, hey, do you want him to go? And I'm like, yeah, Tantrum needs to leave. DM says, okay, grab your things and go, man. Tantrum proceeds to grab a bunch of D&D books and starts heading for the door before spinning around and chucking them one by one at my head in rapid succession, and they go into a full-on actual tantrum. First one was a great shot, caught me right in the forehead with the corner before I could react, and a second one whammed me on top of my head as I bent over in pain. A bunch of people stand up, grab tantrum, and pull them out of my apartment down the stairs and out the front door where he proceeds to freak out even more and demand his things back. One person comes in, gets them, apologizing for Tantrum, and scuttles back downstairs. While everyone asks if I'm okay, all we hear is Tantrum losing it outside for a while before finally leaving. The mood is now 100% destroyed, and everyone decides to quit for the day and just go home. They all thank me for having them over and leave politely. This should be the end of the story, right? Nope. Like half an hour later, I hear banging on the door to my stairwell and see Tantrum standing there with some other guy, and they want me to come downstairs. Tantrum looks gleeful, and the other guy looks mad, and also kinda tired. I go downstairs to talk to them through the lock gate. Conversation went about like this. New guy. So, I heard you got in a fight with Tantrum. Yeah, I guess you could say that, considering they threw a bunch of books at my head. He did what? They're lying. Let me back in, now. Dude, you're never getting into my apartment again. You need to let us in so we can get his stuff. Yeah! People already got his stuff. Well, you need to let me in so we can talk about this. No, you're not getting in here either, dude. I don't know you, and this guy just attacked me the last time he was here. You can't ban an RA from school property. This isn't school property. Get your RA. Dude, I don't have an RA. This is my apartment. I'm being very nice about this. Get your RA now. I don't have an RA. I have a landlord and a lease. They are lying. No, no, I'm not. And frankly, I don't care about this anymore. I'm going back upstairs. Wait, this really isn't a dorm? No. Well, why are you hosting a college event here? My friend asked to host it here, and I said, sure, it's my apartment. I can have whoever I want over. What's your point? So who's in charge? In charge of what? The game? The dungeon master? Feel free to call him. I'm sure Tantrum has his number. Or I can call him up right now if you want. Just make them let me back in already. Hold on a second, Tantrum. So is DM here? No. Everyone left after Tantrum threw books at me because I wouldn't let him be an asshole. Language? It's my apartment. Right, sorry. Listen, Tantrum just wants to be invited back into the game, okay? Everyone already left, dude. There is no game to let him back into. Even if there was, he is never getting back into my apartment. I already told you both that. What are you even still doing here? Tantrum says you kicked him out over a misunderstanding and he's got some issues. Can't you just let him grab his things and forgive him? No, I don't care if he has issues. I don't care about his feelings. I literally met him five minutes before he chucked a bunch of books at me and got dragged out of my apartment by everyone else. And once again, they already left. I've been more than nice about this. He has his stuff because I saw people grab it. No one is here. I don't run that game. I'm done talking to the both of you. Good night. No, you need to let me back in to see her. I can't do anything here, Tantrum. This isn't college property. Let's just go home. No, screw you. You said you'd help me. Make them let me in. Tantrum, that's it. You've done nothing but lie to me all night and drag me all the way over here for nothing. I vouch for you, man. Now, oh, come on. We're going back to the dorms, and I'm calling your mom. The new guy walked away, with Tantrum begging him not to call his mom, and I just went back upstairs. I have no idea, to this day, 
what any of that was about, but I never saw anyone again except my friend, who said they didn't want to talk about it, and, well, I was cool with that. Is there an explanation for this, frankly, completely confusing situation? If there is, I can't find it. I will theorize that Tantrum has a serious problem with that girl, considering he wanted to get back to the apartment just so he could see her, which, yeah, that's certainly something. The new guy clearly had no understanding of what was happening. At least they decided to walk away, that's nice, but even still, I was honestly more annoyed by the smug attitude that new guy had than the just straight up anger issues that Tantrum seemed to have. Oh right, and I uh, don't think I haven't forgotten about this, but Tantrum did commit a crime. You can't throw books at people no matter how much you might want to, that's something called assault. And yeah, that's- yeah, don't do that, that's not good. I'm not gonna try to diagnose tantrum or anything of the sort because I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a therapist, and I really hate it when people do something like that. But I will say this, tantrum is doing something that is absolutely unacceptable. Attacking people over Dungeons & Dragons is not behavior that should be okay at your table. For obvious reasons, this is legitimately something that could seriously hurt somebody, and that sort of behavior cannot be tolerated. I don't like instantly kicking people out of games, that's just not something I'm a fan of. But when you hurt someone, physically hurt somebody, like this, yeah, that's a pretty quick out from any sort of social event. So this happened last year around October, but as I talked to a friend about it today, I thought I might post it here too. Not really a horror horror story, but more annoying and stupid. This has the NSFW tag because I don't want to step on anyone's toes if they see it as NSFW. I joined a homebrew D&D one-shot that I found on Roll20, which sounded fun. Wasn't exactly in my time zone as the DM and most players were in Australia and I am in Germany, but it fits because it was my Sunday morning at 7am and what you wouldn't do to play some D&D, right? We had session zero where I have not yet met the problem player. I also met some other players, but that's not important. It's not even important what races and classes we had. The whole story is pre-game. So we meet on Sunday like 15 minutes before the game because the voice chat was already open in Discord. For info, we only played with voice, no video or anything. Small talk in the group with all the players, problem player included. I let slip, that's morning for me right now. I have breakfast at the moment and I am still in my PJs. Just small talk, you know? Everything that comes as conversation is just paraphrasing it, I don't remember the exact words, besides a few special ones. The problem player speaks up. Are you still in your PJs? Uh, yeah, it's still morning for me. Early morning. Woke up half an hour ago. You are female, right? Me, who is indeed female, and kind of iffed by this comment, but okay. Uh, yes, I am? Problem player goes still for a second, and another player asks something. Then he speaks up again. So are you wearing a bra right now? Confused silence in the chat. Do, do, do you think I would sleep in a bra? That's... Hella uncomfortable, you know? At this point, I'm waiting for a, a joke or something because what is going on with this dude? Damn it, guys, my asexual ass just thought this story would be about PJs. How foolish I was. Well, you should. You don't want them to sag while you sleep. Also, it's very inappropriate to not wear a bra in public. You should change for the game. Silence. Again? Y you know you, you can't see me, right? I am not in public but my own home. You just know that I am in my PJs, by the way, which are a shirt, sleeping pants, and a sweater, because damn it, it's so cold, and you couldn't even make out my chest in this baggy clothes. And that's it. I will not be changing. We are starting soon. No, you have to change. This is inappropriate and distracting for the game. Now, other players, male and female, chime up. How is it distracting? He can't see me. He just knows I'm not wearing one. Till it comes up, basically anybody could be naked under their clothes. I know, who would have thought? And isn't that distracting too? This discussion goes on till the problem player demands me as a female have to change because he can't play in this environment. It's distracting, inappropriate, and sexist, which nobody agrees with, and so he just... He leaves the game. He, he can't play at all like that. He also left the server we were playing on. He curses at the DM who doesn't have his players under control. He also came in five minutes late into the discussion. Kind of confused. He curses at me for being a whore and a bitch and for not changing and ruining the game for him. Not that he did that all by himself. We talked a little bit more as a group to calm down before we start the actual game which was nice. TLDR, a guy was angry and left because I was wearing PJs and had no bra underneath. For a game with voice only, 
in my early morning. We've had our fair share of incels and people of the sort on this channel, and they're always fun to make fun of, but this one... This one is just confusing to me. The guy is distracted by something he can't even see. It's just in his imagination. Just the thought of this woman not having undergarments on her chest. It infuriates the mind. <laughs> It is hard to take seriously, but you also need to remember that this sort of behavior can absolutely ruin the game. It's also super sexist, creepy, and terrible. As dorky and stupid as it is, if you let a player like this stay, well, it can be a major, major problem. Luckily, in this case, the trash took itself out and the game was able to proceed as normal. That's good. Also, this is why small talk is really, really valuable for any sort of online activity or group activity, especially like D&D. Casual conversation can reveal a lot about a person because they're not on guard, so to speak. When everyone's got their guard down, just talking, a lot of people reveal a lot about themselves. And sometimes that's gonna be good, and sometimes it's gonna be bad. And this is often where red flags get exposed. Of course, that's not the only benefit of small talk. It's also just fun to talk to people, but yeah, there you go. So you're playing with your best friend of roughly 15 years, someone you respect and look up to. Through high school, he was the coolest guy you knew, despite everyone else telling you he's an absolute twat. Well, you decide to play D&D with this boy. He aspires to be a writer, to catalog the worst of human society and the triumph that will eventually ensue to conquer said vile behavior. Then it turns out, your good time baby boy just kind of... But he's been telling you all along it's everyone else who was wrong. The worst part is, you believe him. You believe that everyone else at the table they're the asshole. You believe that your girlfriend was a conniving wench who only wanted in-game benefits. You believe that without him, the game wouldn't just fall apart, it would disintegrate into a fine toilet papery powder that gets all over the walls and in your mouth. I was the idiot who believed him. I was the idiot who put my faith and love into Jormbo, a man only capable of absorbing that positive energy and contributing nothing. A human leech. When, you may ask, did I finally get the message that this man was terrorizing my girlfriend and was controlling the table and everything else he could get his hands on in my life? It wasn't when he complained relentlessly every time we bought new minis. You can't just play D&D for free. You wasted your money. It wasn't when we painted said minis in hour-long sessions of chill-out friend time. I think I'll get my partner over here to help me paint. They'll do a much better job than you guys do. It wasn't when he slept in our guest room every week and had the audacity to complain about the bed smelling funny despite his refusal to wear deodorant. I don't know if you guys just never clean it or what, but it smells awful. It wasn't when my girlfriend cooked us an entire dinner every week, every session, spending up to $100 each week without asking for anything in return, only for him to complain about it every time. You know, they make a better steak at that place down the road. Maybe just order there next time. It wasn't when he spent multiple hours after every session talking to me in post-session chatter, but only ever talked about how crappy everyone else was. If this table didn't have me and my writing, this would be unbearable. It wasn't when he argued with my girlfriend over every single little thing she liked about the game and tormented her for having bad taste. Dragonborn are just a bad nonsense race, and Paladins are only played by idiots. It's just the way it is. It wasn't when he told the entire party that if they didn't do exactly what he wanted them to do, his character was going to kill them all. Forge Cleric is just too good, none of you would stand a chance, so it's my way or you die. It wasn't when he agreed to do something that the whole party agreed to do, and then spent the whole session letting us know how bored he was of it the whole time. And then, an adventure where he delivered the premise, and before the second session even began, he once again let us know he was bored. There's just things my character would rather be doing. I'm just playing my character. It wasn't when he refused to allow me to shift focus for two and a half hours, insisting that the puzzle was yet to be solved, then tried to play it off as a joke. This is what you get when the DM- This one ends short because I cut him off and told him to knock it off, but he's talked enough. It wasn't when he claimed my girlfriend was controlling me because I kicked out the guy making horse sex jokes. I'm just making sure she doesn't have her hooks that deep in you, and that you made that choice because you wanted to. It wasn't when he made- <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, that's a direct no-no for our table, and then after getting told to never do that again, came into the next session mocking her for being uncomfortable with it. I think you really need to learn what consent actually means. 
It wasn't when my girlfriend broke down crying and told me she was going to stop playing because she couldn't stand getting targeted like this anymore. The active ignoring, the constant verbal shutdowns, the condescending attitude towards her and anything she liked or disliked, or just existing near her. And finally, it wasn't when I finally got the gall to stand up to him and tell him everything he's been doing wrong. Because when I did that, I got the verbal equivalent of a pat on the head as he spun me around and guided me towards the door. No, I finally learned that Jornbo needed to go when he refused to play a session remotely, despite insisting another player play remotely when he was possibly exposed to insert virus here, and him simply opting to not play that night. We had the most fun with D&D we had ever had, as we played our first ever session without him. There was no controlling behavior, there was no main character syndrome, there was no treating the other players like they were stupid donkeys and he was the penultimate big brain boy. There was no blatantly targeting my girlfriend or trying to backseat DM. We played the session and I made the choice. It was time to kick Jornbo out after almost two years of this BS. And yet, he still tried to take control of the kick and pretend that he was opting out to not play anymore. Anyway, don't be like me. I'm an idiot, and I let a charismatic figure blind me and guide me astray from the person I bought a house with, which he also criticized to Helen back despite being an unemployed knob living on his mom's couch. Jornbo, if you're reading this, suck a dick. But I'm just as bad as Jornbo was. I let him manipulate me and my lack of empathy fueled that fire. It's definitely something that I've been working on. But part of being able to post the story is the recognition that I'm just as much of a horror story as Jornbo is. I have been working on things and working through a lot of my issues. She, their girlfriend, has been exceedingly supportive of cutting through the jungle of my crappy habits and we're in a much better place than we've ever been. But this story is just as much of an expose on me as it is on Jornbo. That last bit comes from the comment section of this post, comment from OP, and I wanted to include it because it's so important to me that we recognize something on this channel. We recognize that people can get better. Look, OP messed up. OP was not being good to their girlfriend. OP was not being good to their group. Jornbo was a serious problem, and OP, I'm gonna say it, OP was enabling him. And that is definitely not good behavior. However, unlike Jornbo, OP showed clemency. OP showed the ability to not just recognize what they're doing wrong, but also recognize that they need to fix those problems and actively worked with their partner to do so. That is so important. It's something that I wanted to recognize. I want to recognize that even though we are people, we mess up, we can be better. We can fix those mistakes. It might take years. It might take time, but it is possible. But anyway, yeah, Jornbo sucks. Jornbo sucks a lot. All of the in-game stuff, the main character syndrome, the taking control, that sort of thing is bad. That's behavior that will destroy a group. But the behavior against the girlfriend was just absolutely unacceptable. It was blatant targeting, and that should not be tolerated at a table. Though, hey, maybe, just like OP, maybe Jornbo can see the error of their ways, even though they were definitely worse than OP in many different ways, maybe they can work to fix those issues. I mean, somehow I doubt it, but still, it's good to hope. And that is going to be it for today's episode of RPG Horror Stories. If you guys enjoyed it, then please do leave a like. If you want to see more of my content, then you can check out Shadow Over Caracodos, my actual play D&D podcast. It is linked in the cards. And while you're there, subscribe to Crispy's Tavern to get more of our content right as it comes out. And finally, if you want to leave your own stories or thoughts, go down into the comments down below. If you can't think of a comment, leave the comment pajamas to let me know you made it to the end of the video. Just like, comment, subscribe. I will see you all next time. Farewell.